Elevators TV. We are sponsored by Regal Elevators and Lifts Consultants Limited, a company that is owned and operated by a Mill fan, just like every single one of the sponsors that you can see on the screen right now. If you are going to do a bit of business in 2024, then please keep it in the Mill family by checking out all of our sponsors' website links in the description below. This is your preview show. Looking ahead to Friday's game, Good Friday at 1 p.m. against West Bromwich Albion in beautiful South Bermondsey. As always, let's kick off the show by taking a look at the 11 that Neil Harris might pick to start the match. And do you know what? I'm still pinching myself when I keep saying the team that Neil Harris might pick, but it is a reality now, and he has got us semi out of the shit. Can he continue that off the back of his first defeat as Neil manager of course, a 2-0 loss up there at Ellen Road last time out? prior to the international break. What will the gaffer do in terms of team lineup? If I can have one criticism, well, there's probably a few criticisms, but my main gripe, if you like, with Joe Edwards, and maybe I'm wrong on this because there's, there's arguments to the contrary, he chops and changes so much, three changes, next game, four changes, next game, three changes, next game, five changes, and I don't feel that he ever got a settled side. You could argue in his favour that the players that he kept picking were not doing the business, so he had to keep chopping and changing it. Harris hasn't done that, and again, he hasn't needed to because he had 10 points out of his first 12 possible before the Leeds game. So he, he's been with a pretty settled side, and when we're at home, you see him usually bring in uh, Watmore for Longman to be more attacking. Now Norton Cuffey's back in favour. Um, he played the game uh, with Honeyman on the other wing last time out against Leeds, and Sean Hutchinson will be fit there as well. But I think the gaffer will go with an unchanged side from the team that lost up at Leeds, which will make it Sarkic, Ryan Leonard, right back, Joe Bryan, left back, Tanganga and Cooper to continue as a central defence pairing, Billy Mitchell and George Savile to continue in the centre of midfield, Zian Fleming in a 10, Brooke Norton Cuffey wide right, George Honeyman wide left and up front, the only fit striker in the club, Michael Oberfemi, the only fit striker. In the first team, I did cover the under-23s again yesterday. They won 3-0 away. They've now scored 10 goals in their last two games, and it was a good 3-0 win against Sheffield United yesterday. If you didn't get a chance to watch that video, because I put it out it pretty much as England kicked off, uh, which would be a waste of time that was. But anyway, I'll link the 21s video in at the end of this one if you want to take a look. But yeah, I think you'll go with an unchanged side. And I don't really think you can knock it. I think Lees was a little bit of a free hit. We was expecting to lose the game to a team clearly a class above, but we stayed in that game and stuck to our game plan and so things could have been very different if we had took one of those chances before they got their second. They still would have deserved the win, but if you can get out the back door of Ellen Road with anything, then it's, it's a plus and you'd absolutely take it. As I said, the only other thing you could do maybe is bring Hutchinson back in. Tangang has improved massively um, and I've always liked Cooper, although he gets a lot of shit from a lot of people, especially Kenny. Um, but I don't know, you know, they're not bowling me over those two. And Hutchinson, he's there, of course, club captain, could come back in. But I think the gaffer will go with an unchanged side. And so we move on to our opposition. As I've already mentioned, it is West Bromwich Albion, managed by Carlos Cobaran. Knows how to get teams out this division. He's done it before with Huddersfield. And he took over a, was it a sinking ship? He took over a... A bit of a wonky team, didn't he, at the time? I was expected to bounce straight back. Steve Bruce, hopefully he never gets another job in football, um, unless it's a fucking West Ham or Cholton. And he couldn't um, he couldn't guide them in the right direction. Cobran's come in, and of course, when he added, shall we say, interest of Jeb Wallace going there, I've watched him quite a lot over the last two seasons. Uh, they've been on telly loads. And what he's turned them into is a side that can grind out victories, especially a lot of 1-0s at home. Um, and they're disciplined, they're well organised. They do play nice football. The one thing I would say, from an outsider looking in, if you're a West Brom fan, the one thing they seem to be missing is an out-and-out striker that can bag them 20 goals a season. They sort of create loads of chances in the games I've seen. Jeb Wallace putting in loads of crosses from the right. Other people creating chances from the left. But they haven't got that 20-year goal striker. They had a young fella playing up front for him, was doing all right, but it proves what I've said to be true, really, because... What they've done is they've gone out and got Angelas Weiman from Bristol City and he's on loan until the end of this season. Last time out in their game, he couldn't play and Jed Wallace 
played as the central striker. But Vyman, of course, will now be eligible to play again. It was his parent club, Bruce FC, so he couldn't play. But he'll be back, I'm sure, in SC16. He has recently scored a hat-trick against us, hasn't he? For Bristol City. But it's look how they're getting on currently in the league table. Fifth in the table, 11 places and 23 points above us. So we've got absolutely no chance of catching him. If we can get the three points, we could go level on points with Swansea and close the gap on Bristol City, Watford and Sunderland as well. If they get the three points... They will pretty much, in my opinion, cement their playoff place. They're sort of in between sort of tiers there, aren't they? They're not going to catch the top four. Definitely not going to make the top two. But they look pretty cemented in that top six. And that is because they are currently in a rich vein of form. They are unbeaten in their last five league games, winning three, drawing two. They are off the back of back-to-back -back wins with emphatic results as well. A 4-1 win away at Huddersfield. And a 2-0 win, not really in fact, but six goals scored in two games and only one conceded. Um, that same game was against Bristol City last time, and Jim Wallace did get on the score sheet. Let's move on to a prediction. And so, this is your pre-match prediction, and here we go. I'm going to go for the Lions to start uh, blistering early pace, get an early goal. I'm going for Joe Bryan to get that goal, but eventually I think West Brom will peg us back and it will finish 1-1, one, one. of course, I've already mentioned him a couple of times, the added interest of Jeb Wallace returning to the den. Last time he came back, he set a goal up and started celebrating in front of the cold blow lane, and that got us rolled up to the next level, which meant we ended up going, turning that deficit around and winning the game by two goals to one. So feel free to have a, have a pop, Jed Fernley Wallace, if you fancy it, if you want to get us rolled up more than ever, but I don't think you'll make that silly mistake twice, and I am going 4-1, one, one draw. And so that should offer this preview show. I hope that you have enjoyed it. If you think you know what the score is going to be, don't be sure to have a bash at a prediction in the comments below. If you're wondering who other teams have got in and around us this weekend, then you can also check out our 8 to go video, which will come in over here or here, and the 21s will be somewhere. That's not really my choice. That's down to YouTube. But two videos will be linked up there at the end of this video. What is my choice is the stream. Live and direct from beautiful SE16. It's a 1pm kickoff on Good Friday. So I'll be live streaming direct from the den. The only fan channel in existence, to my knowledge, that brings you live match day commentary direct from the stadium. I'll see you in beautiful South Bermondsey if you're going. Please subscribe to Lions TV. Come on, you Lions.